Hi guys, welcome back. This video is going to be a continuation from the previous one where we tackled the majority of the ways you can light up a scene with V-Ray. Now, uh, this is the same scene that I used in the previous video, so if you haven't watched that, go back, watch it, you might learn something. So, this time around though, I want to show you a few more ways that you can light up your scene that might even be faster and help you pro uh, get some decent realistic results. Now, the first thing I want to show you is, well, the most basic way of lighting it, and that's with a direct V-Ray light. Now, how would we uh, do this? Well, I'm going to go ahead and in one of my side views, like from this one, I'm going to zoom to where the extent of the window is, go over in the create, in the V-Ray light, and create a simple V-Ray plane light. Now, turn on snap toggle. Make sure it's set up as vertex. That way, when you get to the edge, it's going to snap on the vertex on the edge of the window. So click and drag till you get to here. Now, if you look from the side, you're going to notice that we made a simple V-Ray plane light, but in this case, if we notice this arrow, it means that this light is now emitting light to the going outside of the room, which is, well, more or less not realistic. So we just want to go ahead and rotate this around 480 degrees. There you go, something like this. And just make sure that when you position your light, it's not on the edge over here. Just make it so it's a bit on the inner part. I'm going to tell you why in a second. So let's just check out and see what the settings are for this light. You have an intensity multiplier of one. I'm going to put it down to the, actually put it up to the default 30. And let's just render a scene and see what happens. There we go. The scene is getting lit up. And we're getting some decent, nice looking results. Now, the thing with lighting a scene like this is, well, basically you are only introducing one light and you don't have too much control over how the shadows are going to dissipate and how or how the light would come from the sun so this isn't okay if you would want to have something like this but if you want to have more control and more uh, variety in the light you would probably go the other route or by using an HDRI. So for this, I'm going to close or just close this. And for now, I'm going to leave this on. So I'll reuse this uh, light that I made. I'm just going to turn it off. So go back and create one more light. This time around, though, we're not going to be making a plain light we're going to use a dome light. There you go. Click anywhere. It doesn't really matter. Go back to the modify. Now, usually when you create a dome light, this sampling size is not 128. It's, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's, I think it's 8 or 12. So I'm just going to leave it at 8 for now. And this resolution over here, this is 512, if I'm not mistaken. So, in the texture, I'm going to go over to None and choose a V-Ray HDRI. Okay, so, in order to be able to see what I'm using, I'm going to click on the HDRI and pull it in one of the free slots. Make it an instance. Now, get over here and click on these three little um, buttons. This is going to allow you to choose the HDR you, you want to use. 
I'm going to use one of the ones I have available for me. If you don't know how to find HDRIs, just check, just check out the previous post about lighting with HDRIs. I've placed some links over there that you can use them and get some HDRI, HDRI images of your own. So I'm going to use this one, click open, and there we go. We get this image here. So I'm going to change the mapping type from 3ds max standard to a spherical and that should help us get the image looking right which it does now in this case since i've probably already done this well not probably i actually done this before so i'm gonna show you just guys right off the bat if i just put a render now and i make it render the scene is gonna be too dark. The problem with this is quite simple. The HDRI that I'm using is basically too dark. I need to lighten it, uh, brighten it up or make it more lighter. So just so I can see better as to what kind of an HDRI I have, I'm going to open up the environment and effects slot. You just press eight on your keyboard and it shows up. And then I'm going to click and drag it in the environment map make it an instance click on use map and now go over where it says shaded and uh edged eight edged faces go viewport background and make sure it says environment background that way it's going to show me what it's going to show me the image that has been placed in the environment in this case i can see that the sun is on this side which would probably mean that it's shining on the top over here and we're not getting any sun going inside our room. To ramify this, I'm going to open up the material editor again. And now since I have a visual representation of where the sun is, I can simply rotate it around something like this. I think something like mm, minus 85. I think it's going to work just fine. Yep, it does. There we go. All right, back to making the side. Now, if I render again, I can see something out there, but still my entire scene is dark. It's almost pitch black, which is not exactly what we want. So again, back to the material editor and now I just want to get over here and in the processing I'm gonna take on the overall multiplier to something like 3 and the render multiplier to something like 50 for starters and let's see if this is gonna change anything alright now we can see that we have something going on outside we have light coming inside, which is good. Now, here's another thing. When you're using HDRIs and you have them set up in your environment, sometimes it's an okay to use it because the HDRI has a 360 degrees. So in this case, it even looks nice because this is like a ground for it. But usually when you're working on a project, you were pro most definitely want to use some kind of a backplate. So you would want to get rid of this. The way to do it is quite simple. You simply take it out of the environment slot. So it's not going to be showing up anymore. So I want to retain the lighting effect, but I just don't want to see it in the environment map. So I've placed it off. And here's another thing that you need to do. On the dome light, you have to tick invisible. If you've left it on, for example, you're gonna notice something. Even though the environment is not there, it's retaining the half part, the upper half part of the image, and it's still showing up. In order to hide it, you simply have to go and make it invisible. This way, it's going to retain the information from the lighting, but you're no longer going to be seeing that image 
there as you can see now the entire scene is getting some better uh, lighting up effect but here's the important part remember when we used the simple light over here the, the v-ray light it helped us cast some light inside but take a look at this now because we have sun coming in we have place where it's really showing up while the rest is getting a gradual uh, lighting up of the scene and this is especially can be seen near the top of the ceiling or the floor if you're using it on a window but in this case it's a fairly large one so it's barely visible over here so let's see how we can even better control this by first of all just gonna you know, take the render multiplier to 100 to 100 this should help us get even more light in the scene there we go now we got a lot more light but now we are facing another problem and that problem is we have a lot of noise in the scene now how do we fix this so i'm going to cancel this the way to fix it is you go over to the HDRI light and in the sampling you take from the 8 try to something like either 64 or 128 something like that but take into account that this is going to add some rendering time so it's going to give us a cleaner result as you can see there's no more um, noise in the scene but it would probably take a bit longer to get this result now another way that you can get some extra resolution from the image is if you amp up this part over here which says resolution for the map by default it's 512 this is in megabytes you want to go over and increase this by power of two so if i want to make it twice as strong i would go 1024 or if i want to make it four times better 2048 something like this and if i re-render again now i should get even better results because the hdri has received enough resolution and we are getting some nice results over here in the lighting pass all right now i'm gonna put one more render for the entire scene so you can see it better and i'm gonna pause it while it renders so we don't have to wait for it and here we are this is the render scene now what i want to do is i want to help v-ray better illuminate or better figure out where the light is supposed to go once it gets inside the room now for example as it is right now the light is coming from all over the place like from all over the hdri but once it gets inside the room it's moving hectically it's trying to get to the nearest surface so it can uh, get some information and bounce it around now if you want to help v-ray get better at uh, showing you the correct light and in turn give you better results as with a lighting you want to use what is uh, called a v-ray sky portal now it's very easy to add it all you have to do is make one v-ray light put it on the actual windows so if you remember from previously when I made this V-Ray light, I told you I was going to reuse it. And since it's the exact same size as the window, all I have to do is go over to the option part, uh, portion, click on Skype portal over here, and click on simple. This way, with this, what you've done is basically you've told V-Ray that this here very light portal is a source in which light should be tra traversing so it can get inside the room 
Now, if we re-render, we're going to get a different result. I'm going to try and do it something like half of this portion over here. Or better yet, let's just go ahead and save it. There we go. Save. We have the entire scene saved up. Now let's re-render this entire scene. And here we are. The scene is finished. I'm going to save this one as well. And now, if we compare both of these, let me just show you. All right. We're going to go over, make this set A, and this set B. Now, if we scroll around it, this is a very, well, in this case, since we gave the HDRI quite a bit of information with the resolution, this is barely noticeable, but still, when you get an V-Ray Sky Portal, you're giving it better information so the entire room can look better all right so the last thing that i would probably want to show you would be just let me turn this off how this would look if you had something in the room in the layers i basically have one simple teapot nothing fancy all right and now i just we render the whole thing and see how it would look if in our scene we had any kind of objects and how they would get lit up with the HDRI. And here we are, the, fi the final result on how it would look like if we basically just used one HDRI with a V-Ray Sky Portal to help us illuminate the scene. So with this, I think we, sh we can just say that we've explained how to light up a scene. And if you checked out the previous video as well, you should have some firm understanding of the basics of lighting your scenes with V-Ray. So again, I hope you guys liked this video and you managed to learn something. And also, if you'd like me to make more, Simply like it, subscribe in the YouTube channel, comment, and share it around so we can reach more people. So take care, and I'll see you in the next video.